The Necrons. These Egyptian space robots were once ancient sentient beings made of flesh called the Necron Tear. The Necron Tear were turned into the Necrons after being deceived by a godlike race called the Gatan. The Gatan had the Necron Tear exchange their sentient souls for immortality, but this was in the form of autonomous robotic bodies. All but the leaders of the Necrons were now mindless robotic soldiers, and for this, the leaders of the Necrons used their armies of robots to shatter and enslave the Gatan. After defeating the Gatan, the Necrons knew that they were weak, and that the other races would soon be the most powerful in the galaxy, so they built massive tomb worlds to wait in stasis for millions of years until the other races were wiped out. Waking up in the 41st millennium, Necrons have found that there are numerous races vying for power in the galaxy, and they will stop at nothing to forge an empire that they believe is rightfully theirs. Welcome to Grimdark and Dragons, a channel all about Warhammer, Dungeons and Dragons, and combining the two to create epic experiences. My name is Tom, and today I'll be showing you how to play Necron in D&D. This is my third installment in the Warhammer D&D character series, and the first character I'm making that is not human and utilizes multiclassing. Let's get started. So how do you play a Necron in D&D? To help us with that, I made these objectives to capture the core flavor and aesthetic of the Necrons. First of all, the Necrons are space robots, so our D&D character should be a robot that doesn't have to worry about eating, drinking, and other things that the inferior fleshy races do. Next, the Necrons use advanced Gauss weaponry that rips beings apart at the molecular level, so the Necron needs to have strong range and melee weapons that convey this terrifying power. The Necrons also have a zombie element to them, which makes them very hard to kill, since they can come back to life through their reanimation protocols. So our Necron will need some sort of role that helps them to get back up once they are knocked down to zero hit points. Finally, Necrons are able to use the Catan Star Gods like Pokemon in battle, summoning them to defeat their foes with their immense power and energy. So our Necron will need to be able to use Star Gods in battle. To meet these objectives, our Necron will be taking a level in Fighter, a level in Shadow Sorcerer, and the other 8 levels in Hexblade Warlock. For our Necron's race, the Warforge is a perfect choice. The Warforge have an innate hardiness to them because they are made of metal, so they have a plus 2 to their constitution score. We also got a plus 1 in another ability of our choice. So let's take that plus one in Charisma because Warlock is our base class, and Warlocks need a good Charisma score. In addition to their plus two in Con, Warforge also got Constructed Resilience, which gives them abilities to be more robotic, such as having advantage on saving throws against being poisoned, resistance to poison damage, no need to eat, drink, or breathe, being immune to disease, and you don't have to sleep. Instead of having to sleep, Warforge have Sentry's Rest, which says that they must spend at least 6 hours in an inactive, motionless state. This is nice because you can still see and hear while the rest of your party has to sleep for 8 hours like the inferior beings they are. Warforge get one last strong fortitude ability through integrated protection. Because you are robotic, you have a plus 1 to your armor class at all times. And when the Necron puts on armor, it actually becomes a part of them, so your armor can't ever be removed from your body. Talk about a strong Necrodermis. With the feature Specialized Design, we get to choose a skill and tool proficiency based on our robotic design. Necrons look scary as all hell, so choose Intimidation, and for our tool proficiency, choose Smith's Tools, so that you can repair any dings or scratches on your metal exoskeleton. Finally, a Necron learns Common and another language of our choice. Having a relationship with the Gatan, the supposed first beings of the galaxy, it makes sense to choose Deep Speech, the language of ancient aliens and aberrations. We aren't one of the mindless Necrons. No, we are an overlord, complete with the personality and the nobility that comes along with it. So take the noble background. The Necron gets proficiency in history to help him remember his previous life after waking up from stasis, and persuasion to persuade inferior beings to submit to his rule. You also get a gaming set of your choice, so take proficiency in chess since that seems the most refined. We learn another language as a noble too, so choose Elvish since the elves were around before the Necrons went into stasis. Let's discuss ability scores now. Necrons wear tough armor and wield heavy weapons, so put a 15 inch strength, giving them a plus 2 modifier. Necrons move slowly like zombies, so put an 8 into dexterity, giving the Necron a minus 1 in dex. Necrons are pretty tough, so put a 12 into his constitution score, raising it to a 14 and giving him a plus 2 modifier to his health and saving throws. Necrons can be smart and wise, but they did sleep for a very long time, so let's put a 10 and 11 in intelligence and wisdom giving him a plus zero in these abilities, which is considered average. Finally, our Necron Overlord is charismatic, intimidating, 
and relies on his strong will and connection to his weapons and armor given to him from the Catan. So let's put a 15 into his charisma, raising it to a 16 and giving him a plus 3 in this ability. At level 1, the Necron will take a level in Fighter. As you will see, I did this for a couple of reasons. Level 1 Fighter gives us proficiencies in strength and con saving throws, in addition to all armor types and weapons. Necrons are supposed to be tough with metallic necrodermis armor, and we can't get heavy armor from Sorcerer and Warlock, so that's the main reason why we took Fighter at first level. Get plate armor as soon as possible and integrate it onto your robotic body. We also get athletics and perception as skills from our fighter class to help us throw humans around and spot hidden threats. Our Necron gets a fighting style level 1 2, so choose great weapon fighting, which will let you re-roll 1s and 2s with heavy weapons. Necron overlords are known for wielding hefty staffs of light or war scythes, so take a glaive or halberd and just tell your DM you're reflavoring that boring weapon as your Necron weapon of choice. Our last fighter 1 feature is Second Wind. With this ability, you can use your bonus action to get some health back in combat. So think of this as the Necron's living metal ability, almost as if your armor is repairing itself mid-battle. At level 2, we will be taking a level into Sorcerer. We don't get any of the proficiencies from this class because we are multi-classing into it, but we do get its class features. We learn 4 cantrips and 2 first level spells from the Sorcerer's spell list. For your cantrips, choose Booming Blade and Green Flame Blade to evoke the Gauss-like power behind your melee weapon attacks. Acid Splash because Acid melts people in similar ways that Gauss can, and Mending to repair minor breaks. For the Necron's first level spells, choose Witch Bull and change the color from blue to green and eviscerate your opponents with this Gauss-like spell. For your other choice, choose Absorb Elements. Some Necrons have disruption fields that block incoming damage, and this spell is similar to that in that you could block dangerous elemental damage from your enemies. At Sorcerer 1, our Necron gets a Sorcerer's Origin, which determines what type of Sorcerer you are, where your powers come from, and gives you unique abilities. Choose the Shadow Sorcerer option. Shadow Sorcerers have an uncanny relationship with the Dark and Death, which is fitting for our Necron. Our Necron gets Eyes of the Dark, which gives him dark vision up to 120 feet, which makes sense for a robot to have. The main reason why I chose Far Build to have one level in Sorcerer is the Shadow Sorcerer's other ability, Strength of the Grave. When the Necron is reduced to 0 HP, he can instead choose to roll a Christmas saving throw equal to 5 plus the damage he took that brought him down. If he succeeds, he can instead stay conscious with 1 HP. This is meant to represent the Necron's reanimation ability. Right when the opponent thinks he has defeated him, the Necron's robotic body fixes itself so that he can continue fighting. For the remainder of our build, we will take levels in Warlock. For level 3, we will get the features from the Warlock's first class level. The Necron learns two Warlock cantrips and first level spells, and he can cast the first level spells twice a short or long rest. For our first cantrip, we will be taking the spell that is meant to represent the Necron's Goss weapons the most, Eldritch Blast. Like the Goss that Necrons shoot, this spell is Eldritch and Sinister looking. It is one of the most potent cantrips in the game, and it only gets stronger at later levels. The other cantrip you should take is Prejudigitation which allows the Necron to cast small holographic images and other harmless minor magical effects. For your first level spells, take Shield to block more incoming damage via your Disruption Fields and Hex, which allows you to curse an enemy and deal more damage to them, as if you had targeting sensors put on them. First level Warlocks also choose their Patron and learn the abilities they get from their Patron. Choose the Hexblade option, which will make our Necron a tougher combatant. Our Necron's patron, of course, is the Catan that put him in his robotic skin and gave him his deadly weapons and abilities, but no one needs to know that you're the one who's actually in charge here. In all seriousness, talk to your DM about this unique patron option and work out something that makes sense for your campaign. As a Hexblade, the Necron gets Hexblade's Curse, yet another curse option, but it is deadlier than the Hex spell. For up to one minute, you can deal extra damage, crit on 19 or 20, and gain HP when you reduce the cursed target to 0 HP. The best Hexblade feature is Hex Warrior. The Necron can mystically channel his will through a Hex weapon, and he can use his Charisma instead of his Strength Ability modifier when using this weapon. The only downside here is that you can't use your Heavy Glaive until a later level, so take a Longsword and use that as your Hex weapon. Overall, this first level in Warlock sees a vast improvement in our Necron's effectiveness with both range and melee weapons. At level 4, the Necron takes his second level in Warlock. 
The Necron learns two Aldric invocations at this level, which are fragments of forbidden knowledge that he learns that adds to his magical ability. Take Agonizing Blast, which lets you add your Charisma modifier to the damage of your Goss, Aldric Blast, and Aldric Mind. This invocation gives you advantage on constitution saving throws to maintain concentration on your spells, which is fitting for a focused, determined robot. You can also learn another Warlock spell at this level, so take Wrathful Smite, which gives your next attack extra damage and the chance to make your enemy run away from you if they fail a wisdom saving throw. The Necron takes his third level in Warlock at level 5. At this level, you gain a Pact Boon, which is a magical gift that your patron gives to you. Take the Pact of the Blade. With this ability, you can conjure any magical weapon in your hand. This is great because we can get rid of that long sword and use the glaive again since we no longer have that restriction from Hex Warrior. This will make our melee attacks even deadlier, especially because we can use the great weapon fighting feature from our fighter level. You can also learn another warlock spell, and this time it can be a second level one. Take Blur, which makes you much harder to hit as it appears that your body shifts and wavers to all who can see you. This is flavorful considering that many of the Necron Overlords get phase shifting, which is really similar to that ability in Warhammer 40k. At 6th level, we get an ability score improvement and learn another Warlock cantrip and spell from our 4th class level of Warlock. Let's put 2 points into his charisma, raising it from a 16 to an 18, making his melee, range, and social skills better with a plus 4 modifier. For your cantrip, the Necron can learn Mage Hand, because I can imagine a noble Necron might be lazy and would use a magical extending hand to grab things. For your other second level spell, you can learn Branding Smite, which makes the Necron Staff or Scythe glow with radiance when you hit a creature, dealing extra damage and stops creatures from turning invisible. The Necron's 5th class level of Warlock at a 7th overall level sees him learning powerful 3rd level spells and another Eldritch Invocation. I suggest you take the Thirsting Blade Invocation because you can attack twice when you use that attack action on your turn, and watch your damage output spike. I also suggest you replace Aldrich Mine with Improved Pack Weapon so you can get a plus one bonus to your attack and damage rolls, in addition to being able to use your Pack Weapon as a spellcasting focus. We will pick Aldrich Mine back up at a later level. For your new spell, I suggest you take Thunder Step. With this spell, you can teleport up to 90 feet, and any creature within 10 feet of you after you teleport takes Thunder Damage, which is fitting since Necrons have teleportation abilities. You should also get rid of Wrathful or Branding Smite and place a summon undead. You can act as an overlord now, commanding a Necron warrior to do your bidding. I'm sure most DMs would be fine with you reflavoring the skeleton as a robotic skeleton Necron. At our 8th overall level, we'll take our 6th class level as a warlock. The Necron learns a Cursed Spectre from his Hexblade subclass. When the Necron slays an enemy humanoid, he can bind its soul to his service and use him as a combat buddy. I guess Necrons have a thing for making people serve them? Anyway, you can also learn yet another spell, so take Intellect Fortress, which makes a robotic mind resistant to psychic damage, as well as having advantage against intelligence, wisdom, and charisma saving throws. This will make you much better against spells that target your mind. At level 9, the Necron learns another Eldritch Invocation and a 4th level spell from the Warlock class. Take Eldritch Mind back as your invocation to help you maintain concentration on your spells. You're going to want to have that invocation for the next spell you're going to learn. Take Summon Aberration. With this spell, you can summon a star spawn to help you in battle. So your Necron is finally able to use his Pokemon, I mean Katan, in battle. I also suggest that you get rid of the Smite spell you have in favor of a 4th level Smite spell, which is Staggering Smite. With this spell, you deal an extra 4d6 Psychic Damage and if the target fails a wisdom saving throw, they can't take reactions and add disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks. At the Necron's last level, he gets one more ability score improvement and learns one more spell from the Warlock class. Let's max out our charisma, since most of our good abilities rely on it. Put two points into it, raising it from an 18 to a 20 and giving you a plus five modifier. For your last spell, take Dimension Door, a spell that lets you and one other person travel 500 feet. This is another teleportation spell that is fitting for our Necron. With our character build done with, let's go over how this build covers the objectives I went over earlier. First of all, our Necron is a robot thanks to the Warforged race option, which gives a Necron robotic features such as having additional armor and not having to eat, drink, breathe, or sleep. The build emulates the uncanny, destructive Goss weaponry 
given to the Necrons from the Gatan to the form of warlock abilities such as the Hex Warrior feature, Pact the Blade feature, and Eldritch Blast Cantrip. This will make you the feared ranged and melee warriors that the Necrons are in your own D&D campaign. The Necron are also difficult to fully kill through their reanimation protocols, and our build represents this through the Shadow Sorcerer's Strength of the Grave feature. Finally, the Necron have the ability to summon the Ancient Catan in battle, and with the spell Summon Aberration, you'll be able to do this to help you slay a dragon or giant too. And that is how you play a Necron in Dungeons and Dragons. If you have any questions or thoughts about how you would build the Necron differently, let me know in the comments below. If you haven't watched my character builds for the Ultramarines or Grey Knights, give those a watch too. If there's a character you want me to cover next, let me know and I'll get to those sooner rather than later. My plan is to do the Dark Angels and Custodies next. Like and subscribe if you like this video and don't want to miss future content. This has been Tom from Grim Dark and Dragons. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, and I hope you have an epic day.